that I'm privileged to be a son of one of the most distinguished, most illustrious footballers the world ever produced, Abedi Pele. And you come from a family of footballers. Your uncles, Kwame Ayu, play football, Sola Ayu, Rahim, uh, Kofi. Would you say that uh, in a way it affected or impacted your decision to play football? I would, like I always say, um, I was very lucky to come from this family, you know, but they've never put in pressure on us to play football. And obviously, you know, when you have so many people in the family play football, automatically you, you, give, yourself, you give yourself a chance. And like I always say, you know, your destiny is your destiny, you know, and I, I really believe in that. So it's just what God has written for us and, you know, we're privileged and we're really, really proud and happy. And uh, how did you start? You started from your daddy's team, Nanya? Yeah. So basically, uh, at the beginning, I didn't really, wasn't too interested in the game. And, you know, I was just interested in playing with my friend, with the friends in the area and everything. So I didn't really like to go to training. I didn't like running too much. But when I got to the age of 11, you know, and 12, yeah, 11, 10, 11, then obviously I started going gradually to training and everything and from there everything started. Yeah, so uh, from there then you went to France uh, to play for Leroy? No, so from obviously when I left my daddy's team in Ghana, I was fortunate and lucky enough to have an opportunity to, to go to Marseille in the academy, so I left home. I left home around one like when I was like around 2005, 2006, 2005-2006, so I was like 14, 13, 14 and from there on that's when I've written my own story. So, I mean, you played under Didier Deschamps, mm -hmm. uh, who, who interestingly played with the dad at uh, Olympic Marseille and then from Marseille, where did you play? So, I was in Marseille for maybe eight years, to, from 14 to 22, 23. And uh, I, I, sometimes I was playing, sometimes I wasn't playing, but I wasn't really a starter. By a season, I'll get my 25 games or 20 games, you know. So at, I got to a point where like, I needed to play regularly. So I went to Sochaux six months with Heavy Renard. Okay. And it went on really well. Then, well, Heavy Renard, yeah. the one who at the point came to Ghana to be the technical uh, exactly course, yeah. the Zambian coach, the uh, Ivory Coast coach. So he's the one who brought me to social and made me see football in a different way. Okay. And from there on, then obviously when I it was a really really good experience for me. So I didn't really want to come back to Marseille and not really play, you know. So obviously I decided to to move to Lorient, and after that that's when like. My breakthrough started. My breakthrough was really confirmed, you know, and I proved myself in the French league. I scored goals, and you know, I was a key player in the squad. And from there on, then I had the opportunity to go to England, and I went to um, I went to Aston Villa. Obviously, I stayed a year and a half. Very bad season, very complicated because we went down and everything, and. You know, stuck, stuck to it, had opportunities maybe to come back to France, or, but I wanted to prove myself and then move to Swansea. Um, another relegation side and, you know, stayed a year and a half there as well because I uh, got there in January, managed to stay up and then the following season we went down. Then after, obviously, I went to my beloved, lovely club, um, Crystal Palace. and. Um, yeah, for, since I went to Crystal Palace, that's where I am to today. So, I mean, so people are always asked the question that football in England is huge, that it's very competitive. You've played in France. How, how big it is it in England? The difference is that in France, as a player, you can predict games. You know, you can know that oh, this game, 80% are going to win, you know. That was when I was in France. But in England, it's unpredictable, you know, because every team has very good players and a very good squad. So it's, it's a very competitive league, and there's no any easy game, you know. Whether the team is 20th or you know, everyone can beat anyone. So 
makes it interesting, very competitive and very, very, very draining mentally. So, yeah. How did Patrick Vieira, who was your manager at a point at uh, Palace, influence and help you? He made me see football in a different way, you know. Um, obviously, the good, the good thing about me is that I can play numerous positions, you know, and like I said, it's good and bad because at, at, at some point, people get a bit confused. They don't really know what sort of player you are, you know. You know, they don't really know what type of, what is your favorite position, okay. you know. So, okay. obviously, he came in and he was very good to me. Today, we were really good, really good, uh, we were really good in contact and everything like that. So, just came in and made me see football in a different way and, you know, made me understand the game, the way he wants to play, his, the way he wants his team to play. And had a, a specific position for me that at the beginning I wasn't really having it but with time you you do it for the team and you do it for the club you know because that's the game you are in you know and you know he, he did well and just that sometimes in, in football you are, you are a bit unlucky and that's it but if not he's a, he's a future big coach I always yeah. say it. So yeah, Jordan, uh at, at Swansea and at Aston Villa and at Crystal Palace, we see you play different roles. So sometimes we get a bit confused. What is your uh, favorite role? My favorite role is a striker, and that's why I feel more comfortable. Right. But um, obviously, you know, you try to do your best for the team, and okay. you help. You try and help the team as much as you can so yeah now this is the season where all the conversation all the talk is about transfers we've already read a number of uh, moves especially in england are you staying at palace or you're moving on no i'm staying i'm oh, staying wow. um i signed a, obviously i extended my contract and everything um i'm really happy there i'm really comfortable there I'm really appreciated at the club, so I don't see why I should I should move. Um, but you know, in football, you never know what can happen. But as of now, uh, I'm a Palace player, and I'm looking forward to the new next season. We'll talk about the Black Star, but before that, I want to talk about your dad and your mom. I know uh, what influence did he have on you? Does your dad follow you that closely, and your mom? How often did they talk to you? And how have they really influenced your career? Oh, you know, like I always say, you know, my dad and my mom, uh, if we're here today, it's because of them, you know, and uh, I can't stop speaking highly about them because they've been so influential in our success. And, um, you know, they, the quality that they have is that they find the right balance, you know, in terms of communication, in terms of in, in terms of every, anything that has to do with their kids, you know, and you know that's what makes us happy, and that as well makes us so close, you know. So you know, I always say that you, it's a dream to have parents like that, you know, and I'm really blessed. We are we are blessed as my, our family and, you know, we, we hope we will continue and, you know, everything is going on well, so we're all happy. Yeah. You, you know, as you said, of course, uh, you must be very, very blessed to be the son of the maestro, the, I mean, Pele, the legend Pele. But it also comes with some pressure because mm -hmm. every now and then people will make comparisons and your daddy, three-time Africa best footballer, uh, one of the most iconic figures ever to emerge from the world. Do you come under pressure when such comparisons are made? No, no. I don't come under pressure because, first of all, my dad has done his, his part and he did it very So it's impossible to even get to that level. Okay. I always say it and I'm open. Right. But what I can do is to make a name for myself right. and to try and be as good as I can and to represent the family as high as possible. Um, so, that's, so the pressure is always there, you know, because Football is a sport of results, you know, and when the results don't come, and you get cla you, you get criticized and everything, but it's a game, you know. But um, 
come back to my, my dad, you know, it's impossible to get to his level, you know, like, come on. <laughs> so what I always tell, tell myself is that I need to just make a name for myself and represent the family as best as I can, and that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Now we'll talk about the national team. Uh, only about um, just over a week you played against Madagascar in mm -hmm. uh, I was privileged to watch that particular game. It was quite tough. Early stages, you dominated the game, but we're still struggling to get shots on target. Yeah. And uh, we drew that particular match. After the match, uh, the manager of the side uh, spoke about the uneven nature of the pitch. Was it a case that the pitch affected you or the fact that you really, really could not, I'm not you meaning the entire team, struggle to match their pace? You know, you know, in football sometimes, you know, like I said, you know, Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, you know. But obviously, the pitch had an effect, affected us a little bit, but that's not the middle, and you know. So it's a gradual process. I know it's not easy because obviously your time and years behind you've seen. If we had won that game, if Ghana had been in Madagascar, it would have sealed um, qualification for the next Cup of Nations to be hosted by Cote d'Ivoire. Now, it puts so much pressure on you because you must win your game against the Central African Republic to ensure qualification. How, how, how tough is that? The thing is that for like maybe two, three years now, we're learning the hard way, you know. We're not getting things easy. It, it's amazing. I'm sure many people will be surprised to know that uh, <laughs> so soon you're playing your 90th game for the Black Stars. How exciting is that? No, you are now telling me I didn't. I didn't really even know. Didn't you know. I don't really. <laughs> right. I don't really watch those things. You know, um, I'm j I just focus on each game as it comes. I take what I take it as it comes, and um, you know, I'm I'm proud. I'm not gonna lie. I'm proud because to play 90 games is a big thing, and you know, I'm I'm still young and. And yeah, I'll keep pushing and, you know, keep pushing because... 152. How does it feel always playing alongside him? Because you joined the national team two years after he had joined. How does, uh, how, how do you, does it normally feel playing alongside him? There's a lot of, you know, pride and, you know, it's like, like I always say, it's like kids, a dream come true, you know. So we enjoy. It's not going to last forever, but we're enjoying it, and we know that like we, we still have more years, so we enjoy playing together, and we've been lucky to have played together and even club at, at our club level as well. So you know, it's, like I said, we are, we are blessed. We cannot ask for too much because honestly, like what we we have achieved is is really positive. You know, there's more to come. I'm I'm convinced, but uh, you know, it's always a, a pleasure and. A, to play alongside my brother and obviously, you know, for my, my family and friends, it's more than a, a pride, you know, happiness, you know. You know, the last couple of nations was very tough for all of us. I mean, I don't remember the last time we exited at the preliminaries. Uh, if my memory serves me right, since 84, we never exited the preliminaries. We're all hopeful of winning the last couple of nations. Unfortunately, we exited. We can't cry over spell book. We're hoping that we'll qualify. What are your expectations? for the team getting to the Cup of Nations? Yeah, like I said, we need to learn the hard way, you know. It was it was not good because since I've been in the national team, it has never happened to me. Okay. Yeah. And that tournament was a very, very big wake-up call for everyone. So. Apart from your dad, who obviously has had a huge influence on you, which footballer would you say has uh, really inspired you? You know, when... I was young, I was always looking up to, you know, strikers, you know, like, I would say, looking to our continent brothers like Eto, Drogba, you know, Adebayo, um, then you have Zlatan, Ibrahimovic, you have, you know. So, obviously, I always say Eto because the time he was at Barcelona was amazing, you know, what he did was amazing, you know. And, it's been a really, really big influence to we, the young Africans, and obviously to to make Africa proud, you know. So 
Drogba as well, you know. So those two uh, have done it, have done it, and have raised the continent really, really high. So you know, I cannot go and say that now uh, maybe it's Wayne Rooney or someone. It's not that they've been great players, but I always look at our big brothers and what they've done. Yeah. And what would you say uh, briefly has been your proudest moment as a footballer and your lowest point? Hmm. Proudest.